Hello everybody, this is Ducey, and today I'm gonna to take you through the very basics you should know for the first time you start using Encounter Plus on your iPhone, your iPad, or on your Mac. It's free in all those places, and if you do buy any of the extras, you just pay once and it's and it will work across all of those different devices. But today I want to show you how I first started using Encounter Plus in its most basic form. There, it's got all this really cool fancy battle map stuff that you can do, which is really awesome. But I was using it when I started. I didn't have a TV in my table. I I, I do now. I feel very privileged to say to say that I have a TV table just for playing RPGs. But I was doing a lot of paper maps with, you know, cheap minis, little, I had little meeples out on the paper maps because I still don't want to spend a ton of money on a bunch of minis. And what I was looking for was a quick way to just keep track of hit points, to manage monsters and, and know what their abilities were and to deal with initiative. And to be honest, at the time I wasn't looking for initiative. I, I made a cool little initiative pole out of a donut holder. You can go check it out on Amazon. And I put um, paper clips with people's names on them for when they went. And that was actually working relatively well. But it turned out to be so much faster in Encounter Plus that I switched to that all the time. So let me show you the basics. And the first thing you need to know is all this complicated battle map stuff, you don't need it. I am just going to turn it off, get it out of the way. If you scroll down to the settings, battle map visible, turn that off and hit done. I'm going to close this other window. I can make this a little bit bigger. And this works wonders on smaller devices like iPhones. It's also great on iPads. Or if you've got a laptop, you can, of course, do this here. So let me take a moment and get this looking like it will on your first time using it. Okay. Now, assuming your players are tracking their own character sheets, as is usually the case, I'm not even going to worry about adding any player information in. We're playing with a map or theater of the mind and a battle happens, you say roll initiative. All the players roll, and what you do is click these three dots and insert some creatures. Monsters or NPCs. Now let's say they're fighting some zombies. I'm gonna click on the zombie here. It gives me their stat block. And if I wanted to do stuff in my head, I could just use this stat block here and even roll for things but I'm gonna hit this add button and each time I press it, it's gonna add another zombie. So they've got four zombies and an ogre zombie. And now I'm gonna close this. There they are. It rolled separate health for me for all of them. I'm just gonna hit start on the bottom left and choose roll initiative. Now you can see the small numbers here, 16, 14, 12, nine, eight, rolled initiative for everybody for me and shows me their hit points. Let's say the ogre goes before any of the players. I click on the ogre, here's all of their stats. If I need to make a strength ability check, I can just click that plus four there and it makes it. If it has a special saving throw, I can click it and it makes it. It has an attack. It says plus six to hit, I hit plus six, there's my attack. Rolled an 11 plus six and I can roll damage. Now. On this, if they have advantage, I can click and hold and it will roll and show me the low and the high. Or if I have disadvantage, I just take the low. If I have advantage, I take the high. And if I need to roll again because it was doing more than one attack for some reason or whatever, I just hit roll right there. That's good for monsters with multi-attack. Now, if I click and hold, let's say it got a critical. If I click and hold over here, it now will give me a critical hit damage roll. 7 plus 8 plus 6 plus 8 plus 4. So it rolled 48 instead of 2d8, but it kept the plus 4 the way it's supposed to. And it also tells me the minimum half damage and maximum. Now, why is that? Well, if this was a spell, maybe they had a spell save, or if it was some ability they could save from and they saved, it tells me right there what the half damage is. Why minimum and maximum? If my players are just amazing and I need to beat the crap out of them all the time because they're too good and they're very optimized, I could just say, I'm gonna use the max or I'm gonna use the minimum. If I wanted to use the average, that should already be written in the stat block 13 if I didn't even want to roll. Now let's say some of the players go and they do some damage to the zombie. I just click the 20 there on the health and punch in however much damage they did and hit equals. 
And there it is. And it shows me their health, both as a bar and as the number. Now let's say they get attacked again. And I've got times two and divided by two. So if I do six, then I go, oh, wait a second. It was six damage, but I'm actually resistant. This zombie is resistant to that kind of damage. I can divide it by two. Or if they're vulnerable, I can multiply it by two. Or if they're getting healed, I can hit the modifier there. Not that you can heal zombies with cure wounds. They have to get healed other ways in 5th edition, but, well, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt them either like it used to. Whatever, that's a separate story. Hit equals, and I healed them up 6. Now let's say they'd get 10 more damage done to them. I've got to switch back from heal to damage equals, and now they're grayed out because they are dead. If I hit the edit button up here, I can rearrange these as well. So if for some reason it was like, no, I rolled wrong on the zombie. He actually needs to be down here or whatever. I can rearrange everything that's happening in here. I can also swipe left and right on these to get different options. So let's say this zombie gets something cast on it. I'm going to hit the plus button here. Here are some conditions that you can add to the zombie. So let's say the zombie gets restrained. I can choose a duration. End of the source's next turn, 10 minutes, an hour, one minute. I'll just do a minute. I could choose who it's coming from. The source doesn't matter too much unless you need that help keeping track of that. But I can also make my own custom condition if I just need to remember something that's not in the standardized list here and type it out right there. I hit save, and now it tells me that it's restrained. If I click where it says restrained, it brings up and tells me what restrained is, how long it is, what the source of it is. I can click out of it, or if it does something to no longer be restrained, like make it strength saving throw, then I hit the trash can and away it goes. Now, if I wanted to remove one of these altogether, I actually can't do it while I'm in initiative. So I'm just going to hit stop here. I can swipe to the left or to the right, just like before. But now that I'm out of initiative mode, I can hit delete right here. I can also hit copy. I can start to edit this and give it some more information like if it's hidden or not so i'm going to hit start so i can go back into initiative again here and uh, you'll see across the bottom bar i can stop initiative it also shows that i've gone six rounds whose turn it is how many seconds six rounds is um, this is a deadly encounter for the party there is no party so of course it's deadly and how much experience i get and of course you can use these arrows to go through the turns So let's talk about adding players. I'm not going to go real deep right now into adding players, but I've got some made here already and I could hit the plus button. You could hit the plus button to add some to yours. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple of players here real quick. Cool. And you can see they're ready for me to add initiative. So for Aldrich, I'll just type in an initiative. Perfect. Now that's great if a player rolled that initiative, they roll the 15, they tell it to me and I type it in and off it goes. However, you can have Encounter Plus roll initiative for you. So I'm gonna stop the encounter and just start it up again. And it says, hey, do you wanna roll initiative? Yes. And now it automatically rolled for my players. Now I already had one in for Aldrich, so it didn't get rolled for him, but my other player that didn't have one got their initiative roll. So that can be super fast when you let Encounter Plus do the hard work of rolling a bunch of initiatives for all the monsters and the party and ordering them all in the right order. And then you keep track of who's coming up next it's wonderful. And you'll see that it skips over that dead zombie when I'm going through the turns. And those rounds down there at the bottom are helpful in knowing, in keeping track of how long a condition lasts or something like that. So that is all you need to get started with the very basics of Encounter Plus. You can check out the rest of my videos on my channel in this playlist that I'm probably linking somewhere on screen or in the description right now. And of course, you can hop into the Discord. I've got a link in the description there. It is a great place to get help if you have questions or if you just want to come hang out. Thanks for watching. Have fun slaying those dragons.